Hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Today we're going to make one of these. And you say, what is that thing? Well that's what they call a bench hook. It, it's made for simple sawing whilst being hooked to a bench like this. I'll show you how to use it later. But what it's used for, well what I use it for is just to do small cuts and fine intricate cuts. Have you ever done a small cut on an electric miter saw and Watch the little tiny piece of dowel that you cut go into oblivion and you never find it again. Have you ever done small cuts on little bits of timber like this and found out it tears the back end, even if you have a sacrificial fence? Even on quad and things like that, have you done small cuts like this and never found that piece again and it was the last bit of timber you had? So today, I'm going to show you how to make one of these bench hooks just like this. Well, this is an old one. We're going to replace this one. This one's done a lot of work, as you can see, and it's had a bit of a life. So we're going to make a new one, and I believe you'll find it very useful and handy in your woodworking projects. And also, you can cut small little bits of uh, round bar in there for steel, little round bar steel pieces, and they don't go flowing off either. All right, let's get to it with the step-by-step -step process how. Okay, firstly I'm going to show you how it's used. So you can see how handy it is. Here's a piece of dowel. All you have to do is hook this on a bench. This is on my saw bench actually. Hook this on a bench, put your finger up against it, and cut to your mark. I just use a tenon saw most of the time when I'm using it. There you go. And the piece didn't go flying off. And look at how small and intricate that piece was. Maybe you want to do another mitre. You can do another mitre just like that. You could do a series of mitres. Flip it over and do another mitre. There you go. You got your two little mitres. Put them together. You can cut quad on there. And it, you don't have to use the tenon saw, you can use the saw of your choice. See, look at that, that cut easy. You can cut square cuts. Straight cuts. If you wanted, you could even cut a groove to in something like this. So you can chisel that out later. But it's good for all sorts of small cutting processes. You might even want to cut bigger deal. This is an old broom handle. Cut that off. Then you might want to do a small disc for a wooden toy even. A wheel for a little wooden toy or something. There you go. That shows you how easy it is to use. You have to sand it up a bit, obviously. Use this nice sharp saw. That probably needs a little bit of a sharpen. So that just gives you an idea. Even you can use it, this is a little piece of brass rod. You could use it in conjunction with a little um, hacksaw like this to cut your little piece of brass rod if you want. Very, very handy. A little item to have around the shed. Rightio, now how to make it. Believe it or not, I found an off cut ply which will do the job fine. You can just use a bit of um, uh, pine like this or off cut of any. I use softwood mainly for them. Okay, it can be a piece of waste. You know, online they sell these bench hooks for about $32. I noticed there earlier. And um, look, I learned how to use one of these when I went to school many years ago. And uh, you could make one out of scrap timber. And that's all this is, scrap timber. So I just got a scrap piece of plywood which you can use. It was already cut roughly to that side. So I just squared it up a little bit. And then I had some little bits of timber like this. And uh, they will do fine. Now I've cut one to the width of the board. So that's about three quarter by three quarter. I cut one to the width of the board. And I've cut one narrower. So this one goes underneath like that. 
the hook on the side of the bench and that one goes forward. Now if you're right handed you put it like that. If you're left handed the orientation will be different. You'd put it like that. Um, if you have lower profile material you're cutting all the time you might even want to go thinner still with that. But I'll show you the simple way to do this uh, now. This, like I said, this is just an offcut. You can see it's a really used ply. Uh, I keep a lot of old scraps around just for things like this or templates, etc. So I'll just show you how it's quickly done. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is find the center of my board, which is there. You can just uh, diagnose it by doing this. That's roughly center. Then I mark a mark across the end of there like that. I flip it over and I mark a mark across there like that. Then what I do is on the short piece, I work out where I want the screws, which I'm going to put them in about there. I'll transfer those marks down onto here. Just like that. Just like that. Now on the other end, on this end, I'll work out where I want my screws. I'm going to put them about there and about there. I'll transfer those marks down under there. I'll take a drill. I'll drill through the board. Okay, now this is my long board side. So I take uh, my long board. I line it up with my fingers fairly flush on one corner and on the other. I'm just going to screw this. I'm not going to um, glue it. Literally, you don't need to glue it. You can if you want to. I um, can't sink the screw a little bit, I think, though. Take my screw gun. There we go, that's one screw. Flip it over. Did you hear that? Something crashed. Nothing crucial. Take my square. Square it up. Flip it back over, drill the other hole. Take another screw. Wouldn't even matter if it was a fraction out of square. There we go. Screwed in. That's one side of it done already. There you go. Now for the other end. Other end, we drill our two holes. Shift that out of the road so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll drill out two holes. Okay, I've drilled my holes to the other end. Now it's just a matter of placing this board up on top. Make sure it's to the right orientation. I made a mistake before when I started screwing it on for left-handed. You'll see what I mean. Flip it over. Over there we are. After we've flipped it over, we, we drill our first hole. Make sure it's flush. There we go, that's one hole. Screw in. Okay. I didn't countersink those holes. Those screws are actually self embedding They're a chipboard screw. Use a lot of those screws in more woodwork. They're quite good to use. Okay, that one's right. Nice and square. Drill really a hole. Put a screw in the hole. There we go. 
See, they finish nice and neat. See how I made a mistake before, put it on the wrong side. There you go. That is our cement finish bench hook. I would suggest to you write this on it. Otherwise, uh, if somebody's helping you clean up one day, they might just throw it in the bin, thinking it's nothing to be concerned about. But there we have it. I'll show you how that one works. Just hooks on the edge of the bench like that. As you see, it took only a few minutes to make. It wasn't very long at all. And it's made out of scrap timber. Um, I think you would do it for relatively cheap compared to $32 or whatever I saw. And uh, there you have it. Well, this can be sore and show you how it works. All right. And as they wear out, you can make a new one. Maybe you want to do a mitered fence. Uh, it's up, entirely up to you. They're very easy to make and very easy to use. And, you know, it saves you throwing out all that scrap. You can use it for something handy. I should have mentioned, you can actually use the bench hook for larger stock too. You can actually use it out to here. Uh, this is a bit of larger stock. This is about three and a half inches wide, this bit of stock. And you could you can cut that no worries at all too. There's no problem in there. As you can see, you could actually do a, a a joint there, mark that out, and chisel that off. You can do cross hatches using this. So a cross hatch joint, where it's half checked on one side, half checked on the other, for a cross hatch joint. You can do a lap joint on the end, like you could do. Cut that through there, cut that joint out there. Um, you can make bigger ones of these. Uh, hooks as well You could make a smaller one if you desired um, But I should have mentioned that earlier in the video the other thing I, I, I thought about uh, Mentioning too is if you plan on cutting bigger stock make sure the screw um, In this position right here is out of your cutting line or It's countersunk enough. So it's not going to hit your saw teeth. So just that's another thing to consider too you even if you say you're making one and you haven't got a screw going or you don't want to use screws you can use brads and glue it so some brad nails and glue it uh you could possibly just glue it but i would suggest some sort of mechanical fixing on it i uh, just thought i'd leave those couple of things to think on as well for the use of a bench hook okay so i hope you liked that video uh like and subscribe if you did and we'll catch you on the next one